In one week, Thor Ragnarok comes out, and everyone's excited to see Chris Hemsworth's big, beautiful muscles. But some of you out there might be wondering, what's the big idea about Thor? Why should I care about him? I'm going to tell you what the big idea about Thor is. I'm going to run down fantastic stories that I feel make the God of Thunder great. Some of these are classics, some of these are hidden gems, and some of these are just near and dear to me. And old timers, you may want to stay tuned so you can learn something too. For those of you that haven't read Thor before, I recommend starting with the beginning, Journey into Mystery number 83. This is the first appearance of Marvel's Thor, and it's also the origin story, how he came to be. Although the writing and art can be a little dated, it sets up the basis for everything that Thor is and everything he's going to be in the future. This has been often reprinted and most recently is in the new epic line that Marvel's putting out of Over Comics. The Mighty Thor, number 154 to 157, introduces us to Mangog, a villain with the might of a billion billion beings that were vanquished by Odin. Mangog threatens to unsheathe the Odin sword, which will bring about Ragnarok. Meanwhile, Baldur the Brave is spurning the affections of Carnilla, Queen of the Norns, who takes exception. And Odin is in his Odin sleep with orders not to be disturbed. And Thor is on Midgard, Earth. And the Asgardians are about as effective as wet paper when coming up against the might of Mangog. The Mighty Thor, number 342 to 343. For some, the last great artist and writer to work on Thor was Walt Simonson. These issues are about Elith, the lost Viking, who is looking to die in combat so that he can attain Valhalla. In order to make this happen, Elith tricks Thor into a trap. Meanwhile, the dragon Fafnir is attacking New York City, hoping to get Thor's attention. I love this story because it examines what the end of a person's life is and what they hang on to until they let go. The Viking's funeral in the end is very powerful as Thor proclaims that Elif is no longer lost and that he is indeed the Dragon Slayer. Thor number 80 to 85, this is the Heroes Reborn era. When Brian Bendis disassembled the Avengers, Thor had to go. So Ragnarok came about and all the Asgardians lives were lost for at least the next few years until J. Michael Straczynski started his run with a new number one and all artist Oliver Koipel where Thor was reincarnated and was tasked with having to find his fellow Asgardians who were locked in the shells of humans. Some other awesome Thor comics I recommend checking out is Thor number 169, which explores three years after his first appearance, the origins of Galactus. Thor annual number seven, plus the issues 283 to 300, the Eternal Saga further develops Marvel's cosmic universe through the eyes of Thor. And by the way, it's cosmic. And Jason Aaron's first 12 issues called The God Butcher where three different Thors from past, present, and future fight the menace who is trying to kill all gods in all universes. I hesitate to proclaim who the best creators are or were on Thor, but I'm gonna give you a few that I think are ones to pay attention to. Walter Simonson's run on Thor is definitely my favorite run on the book, partially because it was coming out as I was a kid growing up. Long before the internet, I raced to encyclopedias to bridge the gap in time between issues of Thor when I wasn't rereading them. Surtur, Sith, everybody but Beta Ray Bill was in there, and it's awesome. I had to learn about Ragnarok that way until the final stories finally came. Walter Simonson tells the best portrayal of the real Thor minus the red hair and Roy Thomas, he was the one that wrote that Eternal Saga that we were talking about. Stan Lee didn't trust many people to write comics after he was taking a hiatus. Roy Thomas was one of those persons. 
He worked on Avengers, he worked on Thor, and his stuff is fantastic. He further evolves the um, Thor mythos within the Marvel Universe in ways that hadn't happened before. When Marvel shipped a lot of their titles over to Image, Thor was cancelled for a new journey into mystery series, which returned the original numbering, something you've seen Marvel do many a time. Dan Jurgens was headed to write the Thor um, new issues, starting with the brand new number one, so this was the Heroes Reborn stuff. He really examines whether or not Thor is a god and whether or not we as humans can actually accept that. Later issues, he works with the characters Mangog and Galactus and he even shoots Thor farther into the future than the regular Marvel Universe and that stuff is fantastic. Jason Aaron, his run is not quite done yet and it's hard to put him in the pantheon of great writers but his stuff until then has been very good. I highly recommend you checking out the work that he's done and keep continuing on with the new Mighty Thor. Stan Lee, definitely one of the greatest writers of Thor, if only because he created him. The blonde haired one, not the red headed one. His stories can be a little dated as I said earlier, but it is again the basis that everything Thor is. You have all those Galactus stories that he did. He cre helped create him, which is Adam Warlock. And uh, just everything you've seen in Thor uh, comes from Stanley and his artist. So moving on to illustrators of Thor, we have, start off with Jack, the King Kirby. He created all the Thor mythos that has come with Stanley. Some say he maybe created all of it. Uh, his art in the beginning is a little rough, but as the series progresses, there are some fantastic issues. His Galactus stuff and the work on Mangog stories are definitely ones to check out. He's the king, as I said, and he's definitely number one. But number one in my book is number two on the list, and that's Walter Simonson. I already talked about his awesome stories, but I didn't really get into the illustrations. And he has a really cool line that works really well with the letterer. They often work together, John Workman. And it's just a really good pairing. And he tells a strong story and he does some really cool effects with just illustrations alone. John Romita Jr., the son of John Romita. He started up the Thor series that Dan Jurgen started up, that Heroes Reborn stuff. He was a perfect illustrator for the book. He got it done on a timely basis. He got it done off be quick. He could do, this is the guy that could do two issues a month if he needed to. Um, his style is really cool. It's very reminiscent of, oh, I don't know, Klaus Janssen. <laughs> um, he's, uh, he, he's, he tells a really great story. He knows his stuff, and his Mangog and Thanos issues are fantastic. Oliver Kuypel was the artist on the JMS storylines, where we saw Thor freeing Asgardians from human shells. He got to redesign a lot of characters. Case in point was Loki was a woman at the time. Uh, Thor also got to wear this really cool chainmail, and uh, it brought back a kind of fantasy element to Thor. Asad Rivik worked on the Jason Aaron God Butcher storyline. He was tasked with having to do three different versions of Thor from the past, present, and future, and does a fantastic job. He can really build up the suspense of a story, and his action is quite good too. Anything this guy draws is fantastic, and he really knows how to do Thor. So a quick hit of other artists that I would recommend checking out who have done Thor. Ron Friends has a very classic Kirby style. He did Thor for a while. I recommend checking his stuff out. Keith Poller, he worked on Thor quite a bit. He's more of a workman type artist, but he really tells a great story also, and I have a soft spot in my heart for him. A lot of people have a problem with John Basima because he often follows the king. But his Thor is fantastic. If you're at all familiar with that or his Conan work, this guy really knows fantasy and he really brings it home in Thor. 
for those of you that are looking for new Thor storylines to start up, they usually begin with new art and writing teams. The books that come out are definitely sectioned off that way. So you can start with Thor from any time, just depending on where you want to. Marvel's recently been doing new epic series, so they're bouncing around from the very first Thors until the 80s. Eventually they'll all meet in the middle, and we'll get a nice collected Thor series from beginning to end. An addendum, if you are going to be watching the new Thor movie, you may have seen a lot of Hulk in an arena fighting. You might want to check out the comic book Planet Hulk. It's written by Greg Pock. It has illustrations by Carlo Pagulian and a whole bunch of other people. I recommend it. Hulk smash. We're going to be making more videos like this, so I hope you liked it. We did. Uh, if you have any comments about what you want us to talk about, put it in the comments down below. And thank you very much for watching.